Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Rashid Magradia from the CE, from the Council of British Hajis, CEO and founder. Um, I would like to welcome you all to this webinar. Um, thank you for joining up uh, at very short notice. We understand that this is uh, an unprecedented time and the team are very clear that we need to ensure that our pilgrims are going for Hajj this year. Um, aside of the logistical challenges that they're facing, that they are geared up and they are focused to uh, journey to Allah, journey to Mecca, to perform Hajj, uh, a, a farz that is upon us, a duty that is upon mankind uh, to go at least once in their lifetime. So uh, without too much of a, a delay, I want to welcome uh, on board Maulana Abdul Kabir. Maulana Abdul Kabir has been a long-standing uh, uh, educator for those who go for Hajj each year. Uh, we've just completed various uh, events around the UK, uh, gearing people up to go for Hajj. And Molena comes with the, a wealth of experience and knowledge, uh, as well as providing you with practical advice and tips to ensure that you have a journey of a lifetime. And without further ado, um, I'm going to call upon Molena Abdul Kabir to take over. And just before he does, I just want to ensure that uh, you're aware that we will be running a Q&A um, uh, throughout the uh, event. Uh, so please do uh, send your questions in. It may not be possible to get them answered straight away. We may not hand, have answers to all of them, but we'll certainly uh, uh, go through them towards the end of the uh, uh, seminar. Um, we've got a break uh, lined up around half past 11. Um, it's going to be quite intense. We've got three hours to get through and prepare you, uh, and that will cover Umrah, Hajj, uh, and practical advice, and time permitting Medina. If not, we'll run another session for Medina as well. Um, so I can see that we've got uh, people still joining. Uh, so we'll give them a few minutes, and then I'll welcome Molina Abdul Kabir on as well, just conscious that some people may have uh, difficulties connecting. But Alhamdulillah, we've got a fair few, and I'm, I think we've probably even hit the target now as well. Yes, we've hit the target. Does that look good? So I'll hand you over to Malana Abdul Kabir. Malana, I'm just going to share, um, hand you over the uh, the hosting rights, and then it's over to you. Malana Abdul Kabir, over to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A very warm welcome to all of you that have joined. Uh, one or two things that I want to mention uh, before I start. The fiqh will be according to the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa. If you are following a different mazhab, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahimahumullah ta'ala, you're all more than welcome because inshallah, the tips will fully benefit you as well. Uh, but just to make you aware of that, uh, as those people that are going Hajj, you will be aware that this year there are many changes. What I'll be focusing on is how to perform Hajj. So without further ado, inshallah, we'll begin the program. Uh, what I was going to mention, sorry. What I was going to mention, I'll give you a moment or so uh, to get a pen. Hopefully everyone can see the screen. Just bear with me. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. Rashid, why are you still? Yes, everything is fine and we're good to go. So hopefully you can see my screen. That's okay. Just making sure everybody can see the screen. So as I said that, uh, get yourself a pen and paper to make notes. There'll be lots of things I'll be covering. 
and I'll try to cover as much as possible uh, in the allocated time. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhin as-tafa. Amma abad faqad qala Allah taba wa ta'ala inna awwala baytin wadi'a lil-nas lal-ladhi bibakkada mubarakan wa hudan lil-alameen. Fiha ayatun bayinatun maqamu Ibrahim wa man dakhalahu kaan amina wa qala al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Umm. عمرة إلى العمرة كفارة لما بينهما والحج المبرور ليس له جزاء إلا الجنة وصدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد so assalamu alaikum and a warm welcome to all of you that have joined us. Okay, getting straight to planning the Hajj. So travel with like-minded people, study well, study as much as you can. More than ever now is important because there's lots of changes. So there's uncertainty. I'm not too sure. I'll be open on you. I'm not too sure when you arrive. Uh, about the scholars will be guiding you, etc. So I'm not going to comment on that. But what I am going to comment and what I would suggest, two things, the study as much as possible, read upon Hajj. If you're not sure of anything, ask your local scholars, attend Hajj seminars, attend the webin webinars. If you have been granted the tawfiq and the ability to go to Hajj, then thank Allah. Because it's a great blessing for, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all only that person will go who, who so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses. If you have not been chosen to go this year, don't be disheartened. Look on the positive side and think of it that Allah gave you one year to prepare. And I always say this, especially to my students, that if you are thinking of going for Hajj next year, if you are planning, then start planning now. So if you're going Hajj next year, then today is the day that you should start to plan and prepare for the Hajj next year. For ladies, uh, okay, for the men, a uh, couple of books I uh, would recommend. There's Mu'allim uh, al-Hujjaj, it's available in Urdu, it's available in English, it's known as the teacher of the pilgrims. Also in Urdu, jo Urdu zaban samajte hain, unke liye Mawana Mu'ayin Uddin sahab ki Masail wa Malumat, Hajj Umrah, bohut achi kitab hai. Or other academy said you have a point, but she said, but just give me so if you know anyone that's Urdu speaking, there is the book by Mona Marini Dean Stab is available from other academy, and I think it's one pound fifty or one pound twenty five. A very comprehensive book, very detailed. For the ladies, the best book that I've seen so far is A Woman's Guide to Hajj and Umrah by Mufti Muhammad Farooq Sab. It's worth to me, I would say, it's worth his weight in gold is written very, very clearly on good quality paper and it's a very, very good book. Okay, a tip for those that are planning to go this year or next year, that make a list of all the things that you're going to take. So when I go, for example, when I go to Masjid Aqsa, I make a list. This, this is how many jubbas I'm going to take, this is how many t-shirts, etc., cetera, et cetera. Make a list of every single thing that you're going to take. That way you won't forget anything, inshallah. So, so like I said that, uh, make a list. You can make a list on your phone. What I use an app, what I use is an app called Notes. Uh, it helps me to, uh, I can make changes very quickly and easily on that. You can use iPad or pen and paper. Usually when I go to Hajj, when I go to Hajj, uh, I take a note uh, book with me. It's A6 in size. So all the things that I'm going to take, uh, make a list of that. It's also useful for making a list of duas, etc. So mentally, mentally, physically, spiritually, prepare yourself. So these are some of the things I'm uh, that, uh, as part of the packing uh, list. So your passport, make sure that your passport is valid for at least six months from the journey back. 
airplane tickets now how this is going to work um, my understanding is that uh, you'll be flying with saudi airlines so i'm assuming they'll email you tickets as part of the package so some things i'm not clear on because of course a lot of things have changed and there's new things so in the olden days we used to have uh, tickets and i always used to recommend that uh, make a photocopy of this make a photocopy of the tickets your meningitis certificate now some people have asked this and i asked rashid by as well so the meningitis certificate is mandatory make a copy of that of course you need uh, proof that you've had your two doses of the covid-9 vaccinations personally of course if you have an app uh, you'll be able to see it on there as well my personal suggestion is that print a copy of because when you arrive in jeddah if you need to show it uh if you don't have wifi your battery is dead so i'd rather you not have any of these issues make a photocopy uh, make a photocopy of all these documents keep them in a separate folder and keep all these together is what i would recommend money uh on the subject of carrying money i would recommend that, like uh, take um, the travel pouch like man bag uh to carry you money one thing very important when you arrive at the hotel in the reception if you have a lot of money then what i personally would suggest is at the hotel reception uh give them your money uh for safekeeping for safekeeping they will give you a receipt make sure you don't lose that receipt one thing very very important when you go for tawaf don't don't carry large amounts of money only take that amount with you that on the way there back if you want to buy something to eat drink and that much money uh that you will need to shave your head have your head shaved <laughs> a mobile phone and charger my understanding is that you need to download apps on your phone so make sure that you take a smartphone etc uh the charger with it if you need uh, uh also a power bank as well <clears throat> make sure that your phone is unblocked for international roaming a haram and a haram belt as well flip flop and shoe bag as well because in makkah and also in uh, medina what you can do is you can put your shoes uh, sandals flip flops etc in your bag and keep them with you when you go for namaz so you need a pair of flip flops uh, mention a few things about in a few moments apart from that when you're not in the state of ihram uh, you also need comfortable footwear so there will be quite a bit of walking in the days of hajj so make sure that the flip flops that you're choosing they're comfortable cooling mist bottles uh, i'll mention what they are and i'll show you what they are to me these are very very important because we, when you're traveling now the weather has got so last couple of days we've had a heat wave heat wave and the weather was very very hot it's going to be hotter there so i'm not saying this to scare you but to prepare you pebble bag this is uh to put the pebbles in that you use at the jamarat uh, your toiletries uh, remember if you're taking anything in your hand luggage you're not allowed liquids over ml very very important if you're under medication get a list of your medication from your gp and keep your medication in your hand luggage also start walking from now so even if you're going next year start preparing for a, a, a lot of us we use the car a lot uh going to work going to uh the mass dropping of the kids etc uh but in hajj will be a lot of walking so now is the time to get yourself in shape as well for the journey of a lifetime vaseline this some people use uh between uh, the thighs and is to stop the thighs rubbing uh when you in the state of ihram because the males uh all they'll have is the two sheets of ihram the top sheet and the bottom sheet so you can't wear in the wear so the legs will rub so usually what happens the chafing etc <clears throat> is because of the sweat you can wash that area just with uh, water and hopefully that will get rid of that a uh, water bottle what i personally would recommend is a reusable water bottle 
And the reason why that, because it's going to be hot. Now, this is very, very, very important that you drink plenty of water and you keep yourself hydrated because the weather is going to be hot. You're going to be sweating a lot. You're going to lose a lot of uh, uh, water, body fluid. Uh, make sure that you are hydrated. Very, very important. Of course, you will have the best water there to drink, which is the Zamzam water. So make use of that. Make use of that. Drink as much as possible. Uh, when I say water bottle, what I mean here is uh, one of those reusable water bottles uh, made out of metal that you can pick them up from the supermarkets, from shops. Uh, they cost now about five pounds to eight pounds. Now, the advantage of that is that it will keep your water cold. So when it's boiling hot, uh, when it's very, very hot, you'll have cold water to drink. And I mentioned this to one of my students last time and he said one of, one of the this two tips that you gave were proved very very useful one is the cooling mist and the water bottle he gave a lot of dua so the best is take one of those that keeps the water cold uh, some up to eight hours some up to 24 hours uh, if you don't have that or you don't want to do that at least uh, if you buy or you get half a liter bottle of water once the water finishes keep that uh, bottle with you whenever you go to uh, masjid haram drink Zamzam as much as possible before you leave uh, Masjid Haram, drink as much Zamzam as possible. Outside uh, Masjid Haram, there are taps where you can fill your water bottle. This is very, 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 very important. Look after yourself uh, because of the weather. If you need to rest, have a rest. Don't overdo it. Meaning don't overexert yourself. Okay, if you need sunglasses, uh, Marker pen, the reason why marker pen is in here is for the Zamzam uh, drums. Zamzam drums are usually packed in a box. And on the box, when you come back to Manchester Airport, Heathrow Airport, wherever you're flying from, uh, when the water comes, you'll have hundreds of drums. Now, one thing I'm not too sure this year what the rules and regulations are. So please don't quote me on that. As I said that, uh, a lot of things have changed. I used, I know what the old system is, what's on the new system. I'm not too sure. So please forgive me if I say something and it turns out slightly different. First aid kit, I uh, mentioned what to take in there. If you're thinking of uh, washing your own clothes, uh, then of course take an iron. Apart from that, uh, around the hotels that you'll be staying, there are plenty of places where you can get your clothes washed and ironed. Okay, as I mentioned, flip-flops, you can go to the supermarket, lots of shops, you can pick up a pair for two, three pounds, four pounds, five pounds. But personally, I would rec recommend these Crocs because the toe post, if it's cheap, two, three pounds, they are good. If you're going on a summer holiday, you're just going to wear it uh, in the hotel a uh, few days or to the beach a few times. But if it's for Umrah or Hajj, then I would recommend something like this. These particular model in the picture are the Crocs Swift Water. They're durable, they're light, uh, they're, they have cushioning. Uh, so they, they're quite comfortable uh, to wear in Umrah. Umrah, there's not working compared to Hajj. So these are quite good because they're durable and light. The upper bone should remain uncovered and this is how it should look. So this upper bone that you can see it should not be covered. I wanted to make that clear, hence the photo. Now, in the previous slide, the Crocs that you saw, the Swift Water, that's the model. I'm mentioning the models because if somebody wants to go on to the Crocs website, they'll see all these. Now, personally, what I would suggest is that if you're going next year, then have a look at, uh, uh, go on to the Crocs, uh, Crocs website and subscribe. Whenever there's special offers or there's, there's a sale, they will send you an email and tell you a secret as well. I buy these, but I don't buy them at the full price. So whenever there's a sale, the times to look out for is like Black Friday, summer sale, winter sale. And then I get all my uh, crocs from there. So the previous model that you saw were the Swift Water. This is tried. Now with the light light, you can see from the photo that the, the bottom is black and in the middle 
or where you put your foot, that section uh, is gray. So that gray is very squishy. So these are quite good uh, for long distance walking. And the Sharia compliant in the sense that when you put your foot in there, the upper bone will show. Uh, those that attended uh, the Bradford, this is what I was wearing that day. So because they're made out of rubber plasticish material, uh, they're quite good because you'll be doing wuzu and putting your feet in there. It's not issue because the last thing you want to do is uh, take your expensive 120, 170 pound trainers, uh, do wuzu and put your wet feet in there. So something <coughs> outside uh, the, when you're not in the state of a haram, outside those days, outside those days that use uh, these, these are quite comfortable. These are the new version of those. Usually I don't recommend trainers. Okay, so I see a lot of people, the reason why this photo is here because I see people taking uh, slides or sliders, whatever they call. Don't, what I wanted to mention is, don't go for a branded one. Look for comfort. Don't look for designer label because if they're expensive and you lose them, uh, you're gonna be thinking about your lost chapels. So as I say, that your footwear should be so comfortable that you can walk a lot in it and so cheap that if you lose it, you're not concerned. So as I was saying that usually I don't recommend trainers and jeans because of the hot weather, et cetera. But one thing I noticed, and I have these uh, pair of these uh, myself as well, inshallah when I go hajj, uh, inshallah I take them. They, they look like trainers, they're Crocs version of trainers but inside they have the light ride right material. So inside the nice, soft, squishy, and uh, apart from the, the back of the heel top part and the lace is made out of the plastic. So if I did also put my foot in there, it's, it's not issue. It's not going to ruin uh, the trainer basically. But like I said, that try to get these on sale. Now, one thing I wanted to mention in this is the soap. There's a brand, it's called Simple. They make a fragrance-free soap. Now, I would advise taking a bar of that. Choice in entirely yours, but this is a, just a suggestion on my part. And the reason why I say that, because if you're used to using soap, then you can arrive in Makkah, you can put that Simple soap in your bathroom. And after you use uh, the bathroom, you can wash your hands with that. That's one thing. Second thing is that if you spill Salon, etc., etc., uh, then you can change your ihram. So, if you're in the state of ihram, you can't use like uh, any uh, comfort or like does any uh, washing up uh, powder. So, what to do is you can wash the stain, or if, for example, if she was traveling and they went to sleep on the plane, they had a wet dream. Now, they simply what happens to the ihram? Nothing. So you change the ihram to the clean one. So take a spare one with you and get the other one washed. So you can use a soap that doesn't have any fragrance in it. That's why I put in here shampoo, but I would try to take less things as possible. Uh, also it mentions in here scissors. So the reason why I put that in this slide is that if you're traveling with your wife, then take a pair of scissors to cut her hair. First aid kit, now I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to go too much into the medical side of things, but one or two things I will mention when I spoke to my doctor and mentioned that I'll be doing a Hajj program, anything that you would suggest. So one of the things that he mentioned was uh, blister plasters. So like I said, that in the West, we're not used to walking a lot. So it could be the case you get blisters, nothing to worry about, uh, take with you definitely a pack of blister plasters. The other thing is that once you buy your flip-flops, start wearing them at home. The good thing about the Crocs, they don't need much uh, wearing in. So the material is very, very good. If you're taking any of the brands, uh, if you're taking a particular pair of shoes, sandals, etc., then what I personally would suggest is start wearing at home so that they're worn in and you don't get uh, blisters. So underneath he says small uh, scissors, that's to cut 
plasters. That's also uh, to cut your wife's hair if she's traveling with you. The usual stuff, uh, paracetamol, ibuprofen, cough medicine, sweets. So one thing on the subject of cough medicines and sweets that in the time of Hajj, one of the reasons people get uh, a cough is because they drink a lot of cold water. So what I personally suggest is drink water that's cool. Avoid, try to avoid water that has ice in it because that will get your throat and you start coughing. <clears throat> okay. Like I mentioned previously, the weather is going to be hot. So plan and prepare uh, accordingly. So take uh, loose clothing, not tight jeans. Uh, I would personally uh, suggest not taking trainers unless you're going to be using them uh, days of Hajj. Take loose clothes, jubba, loose bottoms for the men, chalwar kameez. Similarly for the ladies as well, uh, take, don't take very thick clothing. But of course, uh, for the clothes that you wear under the abaya, uh, cotton, uh, what you would take, like if you're going to India, Pakistan, Bangladesh in the summer, that kind of clothing. So bear that in mind, cotton t-shirts, uh, head covering, I'll mention what I mean by that in the, in, in the slides uh, after a bit. Travel adapter, this is the two uh, pin one, the round pins. Now, this is the same one. Uh, if you've traveled to Masjid Aqsa, this is the same one. Uh, if you go to Europe, this is the same one. Uh, in some of the hotels I've seen, they have the, the same plugs as the UK. But nevertheless, if you are buying one of these, uh, if, you, if you are going, please take one of these. Now, you don't spend, you don't need to spend a fortune. What you can go and do is go to the pound shop. You'll get a pack of these for a pound or some places I've seen you get a set of two. One is the one you'd use in America and one plug like this, both of them for a pound. This is very, 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 very important <clears throat> because in Urdu they say, Jan hai to jahan hai. If you got good health, then you got the whole world. So look at your health. I can't stress enough how much, how important it is to look after your health. Now, cooling mist is a lifesaver. So this particular one uh, I got uh, from Body Care. Now, it's like, uh, it's, it doesn't have any fragrance in it. It doesn't have any fragrance. It's just like uh, water in a bottle. Air conditioning in a bottle is what I call it. Uh, there's this one, it's available from BM for a pound. Uh, in the Hajj seminar that I did in Bradford, there's many other brands uh, that I brought to show. So, unfortunately, this I just prepared a lot of this uh, Hajj seminar presentation last night. So, unfortunately, I didn't get the time, but maybe on a different occasion, take photo of all of them and put all the different uh, brands and mention where I got them from. So, places like Home Bargain. Uh, savers, they're a pound. Take a couple of these. These are very, very, very good. And very what I saw in the local supermarket is that you get this water bottle uh, and it has like a uh, spray. It's for watering plants. It's for watering plants. It's a, small it's a small bottle. What you can do is fill that with water and that spray yourself with that to keep yourself cool. When you leave, uh, your home, the dua to read Bismillah, tawakkal to Allah wala hawla wala quwata illa billah so from now we're going to start the Umrah the couple of things that I wanted to mention are very, very, very important you're going to do Hajj, you're going to do Umrah for that you need to do, you need to have good health you need to have good health and you need to look after your health as well so that's why it's important uh, when you leave the dua for traveling Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Subhan al-Ladhi sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqridin wa inna ila rabbina la munqalibun Allahumma inna nas'aluka fi safarina hadha al-birri wa taqwa wa min al-amali ma tarda Allahumma hawin safarana hadha wa atwi anna ba'da Allahumma anta al-sahibu fi al-safari wa al-khalifatu fi al-ahl Allahumma inna Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min wa'thai al-safari wa ka'abati al-manzari Entering into the state of Ihram, 
So you'll take a bath, trim your nails, remove unwanted hair from below the navel and armpits. This is for the men and the women as well. The reason why I say that, because even if the lady is stuck in the state of haze bonifaz, so she's bleeding because of a monthly cycle, still she will take that bath. Where you ahram, of course, this is for men. As a tip, what I would suggest, because my understanding is that the people going from the UK, they'll be flying with Saudi Airlines. Now, if you have a jubba, what I would suggest is wear the bottom bit from your home. What I would suggest is practice how to tie the ihram from home. Once you put them, keep on practicing. There are videos uh, online, and I think even on the uh, Council of British Hajis UK, on the website, there's a video on how to tie the ihram. Please have a look at that. There's many, many different ways, whichever way you feel comfortable with. So tie the bottom bit. One thing I would suggest is that uh, the belt, the ihram belt, uh, practice tying the ihram and use the belt so it's already adjusted to, you know, uh, the width of your waist, etc. The reason why I say that because the last thing you want to do is uh, go to the airport and then tie it from there and you're just uh, messing around with adjusting the belt, etc., etc. So, personally, what I would suggest is tie the ihram from the bottom where you jubba on top, when you arrive at the airport or when you board the plane or before you pass Miqat. Now, if you're traveling with Saudi Airlines, the good thing is that, of course, they'll make announcement that you're about to cross the Miqat. But what happens with that is that every, there's a lot of people, they will rush. And of course, there's only limited space. So that's why I personally suggest and recommend that you learn how to tie the haram, tie the bottom bit from home, when you board the plane, then just take off your jubba and your t-shirt and put your ihram on. Of course, uh, wear your slippers, uh, flip-flops from home. If you're going to wear, be wearing them at the airport, make sure that you have them in your hand luggage. Read two rakats. In the first rakat, you will read kulya yuhal kafirun. And the second rakat, kulwahad after surah fatiha, of course. So you read. Uh, normal namaz in the first rakat after surah, surah al-fatiha surah kafirun second rakat now if it's, if it's makru time so for example if it's after fajr and before 15 minutes af, uh, after sunrise so 15 minutes uh, after sunrise after you read your fajr till that time is makru time 10 minutes after Zawal, so what's the sun rises, the sun sets. So when it reaches the middle and the star, sun starts to go down, that is known as Zawal. So 10 minutes after that, if, if that's the time, or if you've read your Asr Salat until Maghrib, that time is Makru. So if you are passing the Miqat, or about to pass the Miqat, should I say, and it's Makru time, and you don't get the opportunity to read the two rakas, don't worry about it. Okay, so make intention. Now, one thing I, I forgot to mention that I'll be explaining how to do Hajj Tamatto. At the end, I'll also explain how to do if uh, Hajj Tehran as well. So usually when people go from the UK, they do Hajj Tamatto. So at the moment, I'm explaining Hajj Tamatto. You'll make intention, oh Allah, I intend to perform Umrah, make it easy for me and accept it from me. Now, just to simplify things, this is quite a common question people ask about the niyat. You can make intention in any language, in Gujarati, in Urdu, Punjabi, whatever is your mother tongue, whatever language you find easy, make intention. Why is it re in red on the screen? Because this niyat and this intention is the same for other things as well. If you're just doing hajj, or Allah intend to perform hajj, make it easy for me and accept it from me. You're doing tawaf, or Allah intend to perform tawaf, make it easy for me and accept it from me. If you're doing sa'i, or Allah intend to perform sa'i, make it easy for me and accept it from me. So 
The reason why I say this because in lots of books, the intention is mentioned in Arabic and the time of Hajj, a lot of people come, they said, Morana, uh, this was the intention. Uh, it's, I, I can't read this, or can you help me with this, etc." Or I didn't read the Arabic, but I just made intention uh, in my own language. So you can make intention in your own language, read Talbiya. So you will take a bath, you'll wear the haram, you'll read, when you're reading, um, you'll wear the haram, read two rakats. In the two rakats, you read, uh, first rakat, second rakat. Once you finish namaz, you'll take off your hat. You'll take off your hat. You'll make intention and you will read talbiya. Once you've done all this, once you've done all this, then now you are in the state of ihram. So in the next slide, I'll, I'll mention what talbiya is. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention that if you are doing kiran, then instead of saying, oh Allah, I intend to perform umrah, you'll say, oh Allah, I intend to perform hajj and umrah. That's the difference, kiran. <clears throat> This is Talbiya, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik la sharika laka Labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. So learn this, practice this. Okay, so what can't you do in the state of Ihram? So you can't wear clothing that is tailored to fit parts of your body. You can't wear underwear, this is for men. The ladies, they will wear the normal clothes. Okay, let me go back. Few moments, just give me two seconds. So the ladies, they not wear a haram, they will wear the normal clothes. If they are clean, they will read two records, they will read the same thing uh, in the first record, second record, they will make intention, they will read talbiya. The men will say talbiya in a loud voice, and the ladies quietly. Okay, so coming back to this, so the women, they will wear the normal clothes. Uh, this is for the men. So the men will wear one sheet at the bottom like a lungi and one sheet on top. <clears throat> Don't cover your head with anything. This is for the men. They can't cover the head. They can't cover the face. So don't wear footwear that covers the upper bone. This I already mentioned this when I showed the picture. Don't cover your face and your head, men. So, okay. The women, they will uh, not cover the face. By that, I mean, if they're wearing like a burqa, will, will, then what will happen is that uh, they'll get something that resembles a baseball cap or something to a baseball cap, and they'll have the cloth flowing over the peak of the cap. So don't use perfume products. So this is for men and women. So you can't use aftershave, you can't use deodorant, you can't use toothpaste. When you took the bath, when you took the bath to come into the state of Ihram, that time, once you take course during that bath, you can use fragrance soap, no issue. After you've taken the bath, you can use uh, deodorant, no issue whatsoever. But once you're in the state of Ihram, no perfume products, so that includes toothpaste as well. You can't trim your nails, cut your nails, you can't cut your hair, you can't shave your hair, you can't pull your hair, and don't engage in sexual activity. What you can do, you can change your haram, like I mentioned before as well. If it becomes un unclean, because for example, somebody had a wet dream, or somebody had a cut, and they, they had blood on their haram, you can change the haram. Some, sometimes that people think that once you've worn the haram, until you or you're done with umrah, you can't change that ahram. If it becomes unclean, so if it becomes napak because of blood, because of semen, it can be changed. Also, like I mentioned, if you spill some curry on them, you're having lentil curry or chicken masala, whatever, you spill that, it can be changed because of that. You can wear a watch, you can wear glasses, you can wear hearing aid, you can wear contact lenses, and you can use an umbrella for shade as well. Okay, usually on this slide, there used to be flights and indirect flights. My understanding is that people are going from the UK, Saudi direct, so this, I've removed that bottom part. So where to wear the haram? You can wear the haram from the UK. 
You can wear that from your home, the bottom bit. <clears throat> you can wear that from the airport once you pass security. You can wear that on the plane. So what I would suggest, if you're going to wear it on the plane, uh, then there's a section in uh, the plane on Saudi Airlines where you can wear that. Uh, you can change into a haram. But if you're changing on the plane, then I would personally change before the rush starts. So you need to be in the state of a haram before you cross the Miqat boundary. So as I mentioned, Saudi Airlines, they will make announcement. But precaution, as a precautionary measure, I would suggest be in the state of Ihram, find out what time you're gonna land, uh, at least two hours before, just make sure that you're in the state of Ihram, just to be on the safe side. <clears throat> Take a water bottle. When I mentioned about the water bottle, this is the water bottle I was talking about. Somebody two weeks, two, three weeks ago from Masjid Al-Aqsa, uh, the building in the back, by the way, is not Masjid Aqsa, that's the Dome of the Rock, which is in Masjid Aqsa. Masjid Aqsa itself is 144,000 square meters. Uh, like I said, that uh, whether you just take a normal plastic uh, bottle or a metal bottle like this, <coughs> so regardless of whether you take a plastic bottle or a, a metal bottle like this, this, of course, will keep the water cool for a long time. I think this particular bottle, 24 hours. So, because when you arrive, it's going to be hot. You'll have some water to drink. So refill as you go along. In the hotel, don't, don't, don't use the tap water for drinking. You can buy bottled water, but better than that is drink lots of Zamzam water, which is freely available inside Masjid Haram. And there are taps outside where you can get chilled water. On the plane, don't use refreshing, refreshing towels. So when you, you come on the plane on some airlines, uh, they give you these hot towels to refresh yourself. But if you're traveling with Saudi, you shouldn't have an issue with that. Uh, when you serve the food, hopefully they won't give you those lemon refreshing towels on Saudi airlines. But if you do happen to get that, it's good that you know that you're not, you're not allowed to use those in the state of Ihram. When you go to the bathroom, to the toilet, don't go there. <coughs> when you arrive at the airport, exchange some money, uh, purchase a SIM card. Now, because this year is uh, the year of change, a lot of things are different. So I'm not too sure what else you may need the money for because in, back in the days, uh, the coach used to make a stop on the way to Mecca. And that time I used to say, change that much money. You can buy yourself a SIM card. Uh, you need your you need your passport, if I understand rightly, to purchase the Saudi SIM card. I would say yes, get the SIM card. Uh, you might need to download some apps on your phone. I'll ask Shiba if I remember at the end to mention a couple of things about that as well. Have money changed, then you can use this money to also buy yourself some snacks uh, on for the service station when you stop on the way. But don't change a lot of money and look after your money. Don't put your money in your whole luggage, in your whole luggage. So usually the coach will at a service station. I put on here, remember your coach, because this reminds me of a story Many years ago, I went and the coach stopped at the service station. So I turned around and just before everybody was about to get off, I just told him, hang on just two seconds. So I asked, does anyone have a menu scarf? And everybody looked at me as if I lost my marbles. So anyway, I explained what I asked for and why I asked for. And then one lady, she gave, she gave me, I think it was a needle bag or a Woolworths. But what I actually wanted not, the, the Manchester United scarf, but I wanted something that I could put on the side mirror of the coach because where the coach parked that year, they were all in a row. So there's like 20, 30 coaches. Once you get up the coach, it's okay. But when you come back, all the coaches look exactly the same. So one thing, as I, as I used to mention, as a tip that we used to get something like uh, a bag. So I think the lady gave me a Woolworths bag, which I put on the uh, mirror and I hung something and I put, an, I think, a little bag on the side mirror. So I told the people that, look, this is your coach, the one with the Woolworth bag and the little bag. When you come back, look out for this. 
just just a tip when you arrive at the hotel in Mecca al-Mukarramah take uh, a card a dress card and give to every single person in your family uh, whether it's a child or an elderly person so from your hotel get, if you're going especially for the first time so don't think this is only a child or don't think this is uh, she's an elderly person uh, she's not going to need you we with her khudana khasta khudana khasta of course Mecca is a very very safe place but for argument's sake and khudana khasta if you split from your family if you split from your family then what will happen is that uh, they will have a card have a card and they can show a policeman or anyone from the security services and they'll be able to guide them to the hotel so this is just a tip don't use the bathroom in the soap unless it's fragrance free or you use space use miswak when you're leaving for masjid haram take with you the hotel card take with you the hotel card take a shoe bag with you and take a tawaf tasbih tawaf tasbih is just a simple tasbih with seven b's this is to count the rounds uh, take some money to pay for, pay for your haircut and as i mentioned before as well something very important then don't take lots of money with you when you're going for tawaf leave this in the hotel leave this in the hotel uh, very very important make sure you're not going for tawaf with lots and lots of money okay give me two seconds Okay, sorry about that. So entering Masjid Al-Haram, when you enter the Masjid, enter with the right foot, read the dua for entering the Masjid, make intention of itikaf every time you enter the Masjid, make dua on seeing the Kaaba for the first time. Now, when you enter, try to enter and go with somebody who's been before. If you don't get the opportunity, don't worry. Walk into Masjid Al-Haram until you feel that if you look up now, you'll be able to see the Kaaba try to find a good place what i mean by a good place is somewhere where you're not going to get pushed and shoved when you're making dua and so for that i would suggest something like uh, standing next to a pillar so you have the pillar on your side so people are not budging into you or something like a bookcase i mentioned in the beginning about taking a notebook if you're going even if you're going next year i keep and i keep on saying this and you know in a way i feel that allah bless you if you're going next year because you have a long time to prepare start even if you go, but even if you're going this year make a note a lot of people will ask you that when you go for hajj make dua for us and this is time between you and allah make mentally prepare yourself mentally prepare yourself if allah and remember this only that person will go for hajj who so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites and if allah invited you and if allah invited you you are chosen one you are his guest so those that are going this year one thing i'd say as well although there are things that are uncertain but end of the day you are the guest of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah will look after you so what i was saying on the subject of dua So if you've been given the opportunity there is a great opportunity that you've been bestowed with and you don't want to just go there rabbana atina fid dunya three times and that's it bob's your uncle make use make use la in shakartum la azidannakum showing gratitude for this amazing and this amazing gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with is to not waste your time and use your time in the right way and use it for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited you so use this time and make lots of dua usually when we go uh, or when we used to go we used to go together and would take the hujjaj and say that now look up and they would look up and that's the point they can see kaaba and what we used to do is that stand together make dua everyone makes their own dua and but before starting the dua we would say that you know don't rush anyone the last thing you want to do is somebody come 
and made a lot of sacrifice because the person who's come to Hajj, you don't know how much sacrifice he's made to save up what his sacrifices are. So it could be that all his life, 20 years, somebody's been saving up to come to that Hajj. So don't rush that person. So what we used to say, that make dua, once you finish dua, then this is the meeting point. So for example, this, can you see this pillar? Can you see this bookcase? Or can you see this X, Y, Z? Uh, once you finish dua, don't rush anyone and you know tap somebody on the shoulder that how long you're going to take. Don't do that. Once you've done your dua, come back and sit at that uh, meeting place. And then when everybody's gathered together, then we'll move on. This year is going to be different. You probably won't be going with the group. Well, you won't be going with the group. You'll be going with your family. Don't rush them. Dua for entering the masjid. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Allah maftah li abu haba rahmatik. This is a beautiful view of the Kaaba. Make lots and lots of dua. So from now, just get a notebook and start putting all the dua, the duas, because you, when you see Kaaba for the first time, your dua is accepted. So it's a golden opportunity. And one thing I'll also mention as well, that when you arrive in Mecca, <clears throat> it's mustahab to go and do Umrah. But if you're tired, have some, I always say, have something to eat. If you're thirsty or if you're like, you like your tea like me, have something to drink, have your tea, have your coffee. If you're tired, have a rest. And the reason why I say this, because the last thing you want to do is that if you're tired and you're hungry and you're thirsty, you, you don't want to do Hajj with that get it over and done with attitude. You want to with khushu and khuzub. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Hajjul Mabroor laysa lahu jazawun illa jannah For Hajj Mabroor, for an accepted Hajj, there is no recompense but Jannat. And the reward for accepted Hajj is Jannat. What is Hajj Mabrur? Some of the scholars, they have mentioned that Hajj Mabrur is that Hajj, which not only the Faraiz and the Wajibat, but the Mustahabbat and the Adab and the etiquettes have been born in mind. So Hajj, I always say to people, and now it's very easy to understand as well, that try to do Hajj like it's your last Hajj. You never, never know when you're going to get this opportunity or if you're going to get this opportunity again. So even if you're going for your 10th time, <coughs> do Hajj like it's your last one and value every single precious moment. So I'll give you a few moments to familiarize yourself with the slide. A tip that I, I would suggest as well, when you go, go for Hajj, if you're going with your wife, your family, don't start the, okay, so you make the dua, etc. Don't start your umrah after that straight away. Familiarize yourself. So at the bottom of the slide, you can see uh, Maqami Ibrahim. You can see where the black stone is. Yamani corner on the left-hand side on the top. So where it says Multazam, you can see that line. That roughly where the black line used to be in line with the black stone. Hijri Ismail, known as Hatim, you wouldn't uh, go across that when you're doing Tawaf. <coughs> okay. So you come to Masjid Haram, you made your dua, and now you're about to start your Tawaf. Okay, before starting Tawaf, choose a meeting point. Choose a meeting point with your family, friends, and if, if you have other friends uh, that are traveling with you in, in your group. So for this, what we used to do is the light, where the green light is uh, underneath there, or some other landmark, we used to choose as a meeting point and what's the benefit of this and why is this for? So before you start your tawaf, if you're with other people and it's especially if it's busy, choose a meeting point and let every single person know in your family that if we get split up during tawaf, 
carry on with your tawaf and at the end of tawaf I'll beat you where it says X, Y, Z or under that pillar or something that easily recognizable and everybody can easily find okay so khudan khasta hopefully you won't get separated but if you do get separated complete your tawaf and meet up at that point so when you come to perform tawaf so you start to read talbiya and try to read as much talbiya as possible when you come to do your tawaf you will stop your talbiya you uncover the right shoulder this uncovering of the right shoulder is known as istiba okay <clears throat> so make intention okay you'll come in level with the black stone in some of the books you might read something about the black line that was uh, that has long gone it's been not it's not been around for many many years they used to be a black line in line with the black stone so or if you do that uh, that's the book is quite old okay so there's no black line you stand in line with the black stone you raise your hands up to your earlobe say bismillah allahu akbar let go of your hands the ladies they will raise their hands up to the shoulder level bismillah allahu akbar and let go this is known as takbir and only done once in tawaf now let me go back a little bit because i don't want to forget the women if the lady is in that state in her monthly cycle and she is not able to come to the masjid nothing to worry about so she take the bath she take the bath and she'll come she stay in mecca she is staying in the hotel she won't come into the masjid when she is clean then she will take a bath the very very important thing to bear in mind that when taking the bath because you are in the state of ihram you will not be using soap shampoo or anything like that when toothpaste and thing so you take a uh, bath with hot water plain water uh, okay if you are using uh, the non fragrant soap that's okay you can use simple soap <clears throat> so like i mentioned before so when you are clean when you are clean then you'll come and then you'll come to perform your umrah okay so coming back to where we were so you make intention like i said before as well you can make intention in any language so oh allah intend to perform tawaf make it easy for me and accept it from me ay allah main umre ka irada karta hu mere liye aasan farma aur qabool farma simple so you raise your hands say the takbir you'll do istilam <clears throat> istilam is what is istilam that okay in the time of hajj and even the time umrah you're not going to be because of the rush you're not going to be able to kiss the black stone so what you do is you raise your hands in level with the black stone so an average person is going to be up uh, chest level so you lift your hands in line uh, chest level and you face your palm towards the black stone you say bismillah allahu akbar walillahi alhamd face the palms of your hand towards the black stone and then kiss the palms without making a noise so bismillah allahu akbar walillahi alhamd kiss your palms then put your hand down <clears throat> this you will do before every single round so that's seven and on the last round you'll do istilam before and after that round so in total you will have done eight istilam for every single tawaf <coughs> okay now for every tawaf after which there is sa'i every tawaf after which there is sa'i sa'i means walking between safa and marwa so after every tawaf in which there is going to be sa'i in that tawaf you will do ramal and you will do istiba ramal is the uncovering of the shoulder and ramal is for the men walking brisk at a brisk pace 
if because of the crowd you are not able to do it, there's so many people, there's a million people there, you're struggling to move, let alone do Ramal, then don't worry about it. Ramal is only done in the first three rounds. If in the first round you forgot, you will do it in the second round and the third round. If you forgot to do it in the second, first and second round, and then you remember in the third round, then you will just do it in the third round. So this is a picture taken right in front of the black stone. So uh, you can see that where the person who took the photo, he was standing and it would have been like chest level chest level, the, the, the policeman where he's standing will give you an idea of uh, how high uh, the black stone is off the ground. Okay. Something very important, I get asked this question a lot. In a lot of the books, there's mention of dua for first round, dua for second round, etc. You can do dua in any language and you can make any, any dua when you bring dua for Make dua with khushu, khuzu. It's better than reading something from a book and you don't understand because you're looking at the book, people are pushing and shoving you and you're being pushed and shoved around. With itminam and sukun. So <clears throat> when you come to the where the black line used to be or when you come in level with the black stone, you will um, do the istilam and you will face you will face towards the Kaaba. Once you begin tawaf, look forward. Look forward, keep the left side of your face facing towards the Kaaba. You won't look towards the Kaaba, you look straight ahead. When you come to the black stone, face towards the Kaaba. Bismillah, Allah Akbar, walillah, alhamd. Kiss your palms, move on. When you come, When you come to Yamani, can you see on the left hand side the corner? So you start where the black stone is. One, two, three, three sides will make dua in any language. When you come to Rukni Yamani, you, you will read Rabbana Atina Fiddunya Hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kina adab al nar. This is the dua Rabbana Atina Fiddunya Hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kina adab al nar. It is said that the person who makes this dua on Rukni Yamani, then 70,000 angels say Amin on his dua. In the books, there is also mention uh, the, about touching that Rukni Yamani in the times of Hajj and Umrah is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, plus, they sometimes apply perfume on there. So uh, uh, avoid that and don't worry about that. After you read, after you've done your tawaf, then you will read two rakats. In the first rakat, you will read Surat Al Kafirun, and the second rakat, you will read Surat Al Ikhlas. After you read the two rakats, make dua. This is uh, one of the times that dua and place that dua is accepted. Make lots of dua. And remember that uh, after you, you've done your hajj, etc., if you have time, while you're in Mecca, if you end up going early and you have time and you're doing nafil tawaf, remember that even if it's a nafil tawaf, I get asked this question quite uh, regularly. Even if it's nafil tawaf, then you will still read two rakas after that. So you come, you've done your tawaf, you read your two rakats. Now the two rakats, in books, it mentions reading behind Maqam Ibrahim. Now, something very, very important to understand that two rakats you can read anywhere behind Maqam Ibrahim. It doesn't have to be right behind Maqam Ibrahim. Anywhere behind Maqam Ibrahim, you can read. If because of the rush, you don't get the opportunity to read it behind Maqam Ibrahim, read that anywhere in the masjid. But don't push and shove someone just to read behind Maqab Ibrahim. After that, you will drink Zamzam water. The dua for drinking Zamzam water, Allahumma inna inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan wasi'a wa shifa'an min kulli da. 
make dua dua is accepted okay performing sa'i so face towards the kaaba make dua okay so when you what will happen is that once you've drank the water once you've read your two rakats you drank the water you will go backwards where in where the black line was if you go to the back of the uh, black line or back towards the back of the masjid you come out and you'll come to safa when you on safa you will face towards the kaaba which is roughly 45 degrees towards your left you won't be able to see the kaaba because there's so much construction so much pillars in the way maybe you get a slight glimpse if you're lucky but i very very much doubt it but you know what direction so to was you left roughly 45 degrees you go there abdau bima you read abdau bima bada allah taala bi inna as-safa wal marwa min sha'ir allah prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam recited la ilaha illa allah wahda anjaza wa'da wa nasara abda wa hazama al-ahzab wahda the fourth kalima la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir Uh, that and then the dua that i read before that which was la ilaha illallah wahda anjaza wa'da wa nasara abda wa hazama al-ahzab wahda make dua this is one of the times and one of the places where your dua is accepted make dua long dua then walk towards marwa <coughs> when you arrive at marwa face towards the kaaba you won't be able to see the kaaba but it's roughly 45 degrees direction to your right hand side face the kaaba make dua make long dua this is a time where your dua is accepted in between you'll pass something called milain al akhdarain between that you'll read the dua rabbi ighfir warham wa tajawaz amma ta'lam innaka antal azzul akram now milain al akhdarain this is the the part where hadrat hajra alayhi salatu wassalam she ran very quickly at the time that hazrat ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam left his son hazrat ismail alayhi salatu wasalam next to the kaaba so in the photo on the left hand side in the middle can you see you'll be able to see a green patch <coughs> so this is from the lights the, the green ness is from the lights which are above so the section with the green lights in in that section the men will run quickly the women will not run quickly if you look on the right hand side of the photo you can see this metal gate and you can see the people as for the people with the wheelchairs coming and going so what you do is you tell your wife that walk along this fence when the green light section ends then i will meet you there so you start at safa you come to marwa that's one marwa to safa that's two so in total you will do seven in all seven when you at safa face the qibla make dua marwa face the qibla make dua <coughs> between the two set of green lights make run quickly now once you come so you start at safa and you'll finish at marwa if you finish at marwa then you've done something wrong okay uh one or two things uh, let me go back one two, two moments so when you're doing tawaf and you break your wuzu this is a common question if you done four or less less rounds then come back and start from beginning if you're on the fifth round if you're on the fifth round so that means you've done more than four so four are complete you'll go do wuzu come back and start the fifth one afresh second thing is if azan or iqamat starts so you'll carry on doing tawaf until iqamat the iqamat starts namaz starts you stop where you are you read namaz get up and carry on simple if you if you are unsure if you are unsure in tawaf whether you've done four rounds or five rounds then you'll go for the lesser number so if you have a doubt that maybe is it four or five then you'll think it's four and then do complete the tawaf thinking that it's you on the fourth one similarly if you have a shak in namaz that i'm reading is it my third or fourth rakat so if you doubt between third and fourth you'll go for the lesser number 
Okay. So if your hair is less than an inch, then it will need to be shaved. That's males. Of course, women, they won't shave the head. The women, they will take the total hair and chop off one inch from the back. A couple of things on health and safety. I mentioned in the clothing uh, section that I'll mention something about the scarf. This gentleman, the scarf that he's wearing is known as Shima Kufia, has many different names. Now, something that I would recommend when you go to Saudi, uh, then purchase one of these, uh, whether it's a cheap one or a very expensive one, that's, that's up to you. But the reason why I say uh, purchase one of these uh, is just to keep the sun off your head. Once you're out of the state of Ihram, uh, of course, the men they will have the heads uh, shaven, no hair on that. Uh, the weather is quite hot. And the last thing you want to do is have your, have the midday heat on your head when you're going for Zor Namaz. So it doesn't have to be this one if you already got ones like some, somewhere from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and it's you know, something similar. Uh, it's just to keep your head protected and it's just to keep the sun off your head. So regardless of uh, whether you buy one, if you haven't got one and you go there, uh, just purchase one. It doesn't have to be very expensive. But so long as it keeps the sun off your head, that's the main thing. As I mentioned before as well, and I can't really stress how important it is to drink plenty of water, take your medication, sleep well, sleep well, have a good rest. Uh, and when you're resting, it's with the intention of being recharged and refreshed for the Hajj. So in, in this section, I know it's a Sunday morning. Some of you just may have woken up and not had breakfast. So this is not the cooking section of the presentation, but one or two things uh, I just want to mention. What you can see on the slide is a plastic container, a gallon of uh, fresh leban. Now this is a two liter, they do a family pack, which is 2.8 liter, which is bigger than this. Uh, this is quite common, the two liter one. Fresh leban is available in the grocery shops. So when you come out to your hotel, the nearest grocery shops, you should be able to find this. Very, very common there. Uh, it's something between milk and yogurt. So basically it's runny yogurt, if I was to put it in simple words. Now, you can add salt to this and make it salty, let's see. You can add sugar, make it sweet, let's see. You can add water to dilute it. So for those that are thinking that why on earth is he mentioning this about food in the middle of the Hajj seminar, it's very important that you look after your health. So the lassi, it helps to keep you cool. And of course, by drinking this, you'll keep hydrated as well. If lassi is not your cup of tea, then when I went with my cousin brother, uh, what we used to do is get these uh, fruit uh, bottles made by fruit juice bottles made by the same company. Uh, there's a very, uh, there's a nice variety uh, available in the shops in Mecca and in Medina. So we used to have something called a smoothie espresso. So it's very simple. You take a glass, add half a cup of lemon, half uh, a cup of strawberry juice or whatever juice is your favorite. Give it a stir and that's it, Bob's your uncle. You got a quick smoothie. That's why it's called smoothie espresso because you can make it quickly. And this helps to cool you. And also after Zohar, it gives you, it gives you a nice sleep. So if strawberry was my favorite, my cousin brother used to like the mango, less, a mango one. So it's sort of a mango lassi or a mango smoothie you get. So this is part of the Hajj tips uh, that we go through in our Hajj uh, seminars. Okay, sleeping in hot weather, lots of things, but I'll just mention one thing. Uh, what I normally do is I take a lungi with me. And when I'm in the hotel, if it's too hot, then I just sprinkle water on the lungi, cover myself with that. I don't use, of course, the quilt, etc. cetera. Uh, and while the water is drying, it's, it's, take, it's taking the heat from my body, it's cooling my body, and I fall asleep. It's quite good. If you don't have lungi, not a problem. You can use your ahram, sprinkle a lot of water on it and use yourself to cover with that. Uh, that reminds me of something else as well, uh, because this year might be different. I'm not too sure, to be honest with you, how the room structures is. Uh, if you are sleeping with uh, strangers, etc., I'm not too sure how it's going to work. Reg but regardless of that, who you're sleeping with, please be mindful. So 
uh, what I mean by that is that so far as the air conditioning is concerned, uh, you know, we don't want somebody saying, oh, it's too hot. The other person saying it's too cold. Be mindful. And if you have other people in your room, set the, the air conditioning at a temperature, temperature that's not too hot, not too cold. Uh, and it's like suitable temperature for all. So look after your the people with you and around you. Uh, there's not much time, but one thing I'm, I, I will say that, uh, especially in Tawaf, when you're going around, uh, uh, you might get pushed because of, uh, you might get um, elbowed in your ribs. It's not that somebody's going to do that on purpose, but because there's a lot of people, it's a small space. So please be patient. So don't uh, vent your anger on someone, especially in a place like that. And bear in mind that I know it's easy for me to say that, sat in a nice cool room on my own. Uh, you're going to be there with millions of people. But please, please do bear this in mind because the person next to you is also the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to perform Hajj? We'll start with this. Our Hapas, inshallah, will take a break. So if you were doing Tamatto, <clears throat> you come, you've done your Umrah, you come out of, once you've had your hair shaved, uh, then you come out of the state of Ihram, you're no longer in the state of Ihram, you wear your normal clothes, now all the things that were haram upon you become halal once more, so you can use soap, you can use uh, deodorant, you can uh, toothpaste, uh, wear your normal clothes, etc. <clears throat> so while you are in uh, Mecca, if you have the opportunity, try to perform as much tawaf as possible. <coughs> as I mentioned before, every single tawaf that you perform, if, if it's nafil, still, uh, you'll need to re read two rakats. The common question is that, can we do tawaf on behalf of someone? You can. So for somebody who's like passed away, so for example, if somebody's father passed away, they want to do Tawaf on behalf of the father, they can do two things. Uh, before they begin the Tawaf, they make intention, oh Allah intend to perform this Tawaf on behalf of my father. Or after you've done the Tawaf, make intention for Tawaf, and after you've done the Tawaf, oh Allah, this Tawaf that I make Dua, that, oh Allah, this Tawaf that I've made, accept it from me and convey the Tawaf to my father, my parents, etc. So this is quite a common question. So what will happen now? So far as the logistics are concerned, I'm not going to go into that. The honest reason for that is I don't know. Uh, but how to perform Hajj, I will go through. So usually what used to happen on the seventh at night, they used to say, uh, get ready, or they used to say, get ready before that. Uh, on the seventh at night, the coaches will come and pick you up. Of course, it's nothing to worry about if you're going for the first time, or if you're going new, of course, when you go there, they'll tell you the times, etc. So don't let that worry you. As I mentioned before, of, before you are the guest of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are going to his house. He has chosen you. He will look after you. Okay, so you take a bath as normal. Wear the haram in the hotel. Read two rakats. You can read two rakats in the haram or in the hotel. Uh, where you read it, it depends, I would say, how far your hotel if your hotel is quite distance, the last thing you want to be doing is going to the haram and keep the rest of your group waiting. Read the two rakats in your hotel. That's my suggestion. Make intention uh, for hajj. So these are the people that are doing tamatto. You'll make intention for doing hajj. You'll read talbiya. So, oh Allah, intention. Oh Allah, I intend to perform hajj. Make it easy for me. Accept it from me. Allahumma inni yuridu al-hajja fa yassiru li wa taqabbalhu minni. Talbiya, labbayk Allahumma labbayk, labbayk la sharika laka labbayk, inna alhamda wa al-na'mata laka wa al-mulk la sharika lak. Then you will leave for Mina. When I say you leave for Mina, the coaches, they come, they collect you and take you to Mina. When you go to Mina, you will stay there and you will read namaz. This is what it looks like. In Mina, you will read five salat. So at night, on the seventh, the coaches will come and pick you up. Of course, if it changes, uh, they will let you know what time they'll be coming, etc. 
So you will come to me now. You will read Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. You will read that in your tent. What I would say is that uh, when you eat Mina, take it easy, rest as much as possible. Because from the 10th onwards, well, from tomorrow, from the next day onwards, uh, and moving forward, you're going to have a busy schedule in the next couple of days. So I wouldn't just go walking around. Plus, the weather is going to be hot. Look after your health and energize, relax, take it easy. By taking it easy, uh, what I mean is that relax in your own section uh, of the tent, keep it clean, and engage yourself in ibadat, the recitation of the Quran, du'as, tilawa, zikr, ibadat. And what I would say is that whether you're going now or whether you're going next year, start practicing the du'as, etc. Start learning the du'as. Take a copy of you. Uh, one thing I forgot to put in the, the things to take is du'a books. One is Masail books, how to do hajj. And one is du'a books. So things that I would recommend, something like Hizbul Azam, Munajati Maqbul, start reading those now so your tongue becomes fluent. So your tongue becomes fluent. What I would also say is, is that start practicing now. And uh, if there's anything that you're not sure about, so far as the pronunciation is concerned, speak to your local Imam Sab. And uh, if there's uh, any ulama, imams, shiuk listening, the humble appeal and request is that people, especially this year, they have less time to plan, prepare. If people come to you, if people come to you, be approachable, try to help them as much as possible. And if you can, try to arrange uh, some programs so the hujjad benefits as much as possible. So the first day is simple, is straightforward. Uh, just read your namaz in your tents uh, at the normal time. This will give you the first picture was uh, uh, the tents in Mina, uh, empty. This is to give you an idea what it should look like. That reminds me when you're wearing the haram, make sure that the bottom piece is above the ankles and the top part is covers the belly button as well. Because according to the ahnaf, those that follow the Hanafi school of fiqh that the satr, the, the, the part of the body which is for us to cover is from the belly button to below the knees. So make sure that when you're tying the haram, your belly button is not exposed. <clears throat> is another uh, photo, Jazakallah, to Rashid Bhai, mashallah, he sent. Lots of beautiful photos last night. Unfortunately, just shortage of time that I was not able to put a lot more into this presentation. But inshallah, I will do in the future. Okay, so then on the next day, then on the next day, what will happen is that uh, you will leave Mina mid-morning. Like, like I said, and probably will say, a few more times, what time your group leader or the local people that have been assigned or a local representative will tell you about the timings, etc. I'm not too sure who's going to be responsible for that, but inshallah, there will be somebody, uh, they will be able to guide you about the times, etc. as well. So you will leave Mina and go to Arafat, find out what time you'll be leaving and be mentally and physically prepared for that. Uh, if you need to or you can use the bathroom before doing so, it's a good idea. Uh, there's less bathrooms in Arafat than there are in Mina. In Mina, bathrooms, uh, toilets, etc. should have no issues. But Arafat is only used once a year uh, for that uh, afternoon. So there's less toilets. The wuquf uh, will start after Zawal. So you'll do Dua from Zohar. Okay, so what usually used to happen we used to arrive there, uh, go to the bathroom if need be, uh, do wuzu, read zohar. We used to have food, and then the wakuf of Arafat, the main day, the main 
the essence of Hajj, Al Hajj Al Arafa, the, the essence of Hajj, the main day of Hajj. If you did everything and you didn't go to Arafat, your Hajj is not done. So the main part, the main time, and the main day, uh, this is the main uh, day for Hajj. So mentally, physically, spiritually, prepare yourself for this. And another tip that I would suggest as well, in the days of Hajj, take the books with you. A good uh, selection of book, booklets is by Mullah Nasrim Dorat Sab. Dawud Barakatuhum, they have written a set how to do Humrah, how to do Hajj, how to do Ziyarat of Medina al Munawwara. Take that set with you. Uh, read those again and again. If there's anything that you're not sure of, speak to your local ulama. Uh, there's nothing to be shy about. Uh, and get some clarification. Take those books with you. And what I would suggest is, as a tip, whatever you're going to do tomorrow. So for example, on the 8th, you're in Mina. Have a look at the next day, the day of Arafah, what you'll be doing. And mentally and physically prepare yourself. Usually what used to happen is that people used to engage themselves in dua individually. And then after Asr, uh, the group Alim, the group scholar, used to make congregational dua. So you'll be in Arafat. You'll be in Arafat uh, from mid-morning and you will leave only after Maghrib time. After Maghrib, you will read for you will leave for Muzdalifa. <coughs> I'm just going to go through the dua of Arafat and then we'll take a break, inshallah. So in one hadith, it is mentioned, it's when one stands and reads the following dua after Zawal in Arafat, on the day of Arafat, facing Qibla, Allah says, Oh, my angels, what is the reward of my servant who glorified me, praised me, mentioned my oneness and greatness, and sent salutations on my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I have forgiven him. So what does Allah reply? Allah say, I have forgiven him and accepted his request regarding his deeds. And if my servant intercedes for all those in Arafat, I will accept it. And he may ask what he wishes. So what's that dua? What should a person read? 100 times what kalima la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir surah al-ikhlas bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul huwa allah ahad allah samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad so it's very important that when you go you take a tasbih with you take a good quality one that the, the string will not break and then 100 times durood shif Ad wa alayna mahum at the end of every drushif. So how you will read that? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim in neka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim in neka hamidun majid. Wa alayna mahum. So 100 times. So this is the virtue of reading 100 times Fort Kalima, 100 times Surat Akhlas. And 100 times through the Ibrahim with Wa Alayna Mahum at the end. Okay, so okay, let's look at the next slide. We're just two minutes away from <clears throat> the break. So, when the time of Maghrib begins, then you will leave Arafat to go to Muzdalifa. Muzdalifa is where you'll be spending the night. When the time of Maghrib starts is when you leave. When the time of Isha begins, when the time of Isha begins, you will read, there will be one Azan and one Iqamat. So the person will give Azan. After that, Iqamat will be said. The Faraz of Maghrib will be read followed by the Faraz of Isha, the Sunnats of Maghrib, Sunnats of Isha, then Witr. <coughs> if a person arrived in Musdalifa and the time of Isha has not begun, he will not read Maghrib then and Maghrib and Isha then. 
this has to be read and can be re will only be read once the time of Isha starts. So Isha time starts, Azan, Iqamat, Maghrib Farz, Farz of Maghrib, Farz of Isha, Sunnats of Maghrib, Sunnats of Isha, and then the Witr. And on the note, is uh, I'll conclude for the time being, it's half past now, inshallah, at quarter two, promptly, we'll, be, we'll begin the second part. Jazakallah. Malana, would you mind just giving me control, please? Okay. Inshallah, we'll see you all back at 11.45. Two seconds.
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. And uh, alhamdulillah, we can see all of you have uh, still logged on and still with us. Uh, I hope the first session was not too intense, but there's a lot of uh, content to cover. If you've got questions, please keep them coming in. Um, we're trying our best to try and get them answered for you whilst this continues. What I want to do very quickly is run a quick poll. So um, we'll give it a couple of minutes and then I'll hand it back over to Molana Abdul Kabir to take you through part two of Hajj. So I'll launch the poll now. So I'll give you a few, few minutes now just to quickly come, uh, you know, answer them questions, please. It just gives us a bit of an idea of uh, what's going on out there and the challenges you're facing. So we'll let that poll run for a few minutes as people join us back from the break. To everyone who's joining us back after the break, please complete the poll. You'll see it on your screen. Okay, we're seeing results coming through, alhamdulillah, very good. So we'll, we'll give a couple of more minutes. And please do use the Q&A function um, in the webinar to ask your questions for clarity and guidance. And Mullah Abdul Kabir, if you're uh, online with us now, uh, please feel free to go through the Q&As and we can answer them as you go through the webinar and uh, towards the end as well, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and welcome back. Hope you all had a nice coffee, recharge and refresh. Inshallah, we'll complete Hajj. And Inshallah, we'll take you to Medina al Munawwara. Nice recharge and refresh. Uh, before we do that, I'll just quickly go through some of the questions. I'll try my best. Okay, so. Somebody asked, will this session be sent to everyone? So what we hope, uh, my understanding is, is that it's on Facebook. Live is also on YouTube and inshallah, uh, a copy of this will be on YouTube. So later on, you can share with your friends, family, relations, relatives, yes. Uh, second question, can you give translation of the duas also that you are stating on here, either in English or Urdu? Uh, what I, Jazakallah for that, uh, what I can do is in the future, uh, this, a, a lot of the, the slides were prepared last night, so, went to sleep very late last night. Uh, so it may have sounded like I have not had coffee for many, many years. So I apologize for that. So, uh, but going back to answering this question, inshallah, what I can do moving forward is that uh, the next slide or set of slides that I prepare, I can put the, the translation of the dua. That, that's, that's not a problem at all. Most likely it will be in English because it's easy for me to type. So that, that's not a problem that can be done. Uh, also. Uh, I'd like to mention that this was prepared very quickly. If there is anything that you would like to see in future slides or anything that we can assist, we can do for you, assist you in making your Hajj easy, especially so far as Masail are concerned, so far as the Fiqh side of things of how to do Hajj is concerned, if there's anything that I can help you with or my colleagues can help you with, please, please let me know. And I will take that on board. The feedback, the most one of the most important things in a Hajj seminar is the feedback at the end, what people give. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, somebody asked if you so if you intend to wear uh, the bottom part of the haram and my journey is from home, it takes three hours to get to the airport. Before this, I need to make a haram intention, i.e., clip nails. Uh, okay, make a haram intention is not uh, clipping nails. So uh, what will happen is that you will wear the haram, 
from home. But it's a very, very good, good question. And Zakla, so much for that. What will happen, just to clarify, you will take a bath at home, you'll uh, clip your nails, remove the hair uh, below the navel, under the arms, wear your ahram, and you will make your way to the airport. Once you're on the airport, pass security, etc. Once you board the plane, before boarding the plane, you can read the two records. You can read them on the plane, there's space on Saudi Airlines. And before Miqat, you can make intention and then re recite Talbiyah. When you make the intention, recite Talbiyah. After that, you'll be in the state of Ahram. <clears throat> okay. I have, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Plantar, fascia, uh, plantar fasciitis. Uh, so for that, what any tips? Okay, uh, I'm assuming, of course, you're asking about walking between Safa and Marwa. Uh, apart from that, uh, apart from the days of Hajj, one or, one or two things. Normally, the Crocs, especially the light right ones, they're very good. A lot of people with plantar uh, fasciitis uh, they found this very useful. It, once you've completed your Hajj and Umrah, if you're doing uh, after uh, the second, uh, sorry, Tawf is Yarat, then if you're wearing uh, the normal uh, clothes, sorry, sorry, okay, let me go back. Uh, it depends who's asking this question, if it's a he or a she. So if it's um, a lady, they can wear socks anyway, uh, etc. So what I would say is you can get like ankle socks, ankle socks that are padded at the bottom. So places like Primark, supermarkets, uh, the, the padded uh, socks are quite good. So that's, that's what I would recommend. Uh, outside, uh, when you're not be walking between Safa and Marwa, normal walking crocs are quite good. Uh, somebody asked me to go back to the seventh of Zul Hijjah slide. So on the seventh of Zul Hijjah, you'll take a bath, get ready. Bath, get ready, uh, read your two records. Okay, somebody asked, can you hold your wives? And during Umrah is, uh, okay, during Hajj period and during Umrah, is it fine to hold your wife's hand and keep her close uh, or is it not possible? When you're doing normal Hajj and Umrah, I'm, I'm assuming this person is asking about uh, when you're doing Tawaf, Normally in Hajj and Umrah, you don't need to hold a hand. Uh, inshallah, you won't lose her. If you're asking about in Tawaf, uh, I would suggest uh, that don't hold a hand. But if you need to, because if there's a, a, a big crowd, etc., you feel that you're going to lose her and she's moving far from you, you can hold a hand. Uh, recommend, uh, can we please get a list of recommendation books? Very good question. Uh, after the program, I'll have a word with Rashid Bai and see what we can do for you. Uh, can you wear sunscreen if it's so long as it's um, so long as it's uh, not as they put uh, unscented? Now, so far as uh, sunscreen is concerned, uh, if it's unscented, uh, then I was going to say yes, you can wear it. But have a look in the ingredients. What's in the ingredients? If it's like uh, glycerin or animal fats or something like that. If you can get sunscreen that's unscented and is suitable for vegan vegetarians, <clears throat> or it says on there no animal products used, then that's uh, what I would recommend and suggest. Okay, somebody asked uh, about the copy of the PowerPoint. So at the moment, it's just like started, inshallah. Uh, hopefully, I'll add more things. So some in the original one, uh, or the one that I prepared last night, they were just one, two photos. They don't mean anything to anyone, but the whole presentation that you see is going to be available on YouTube. So don't worry about that. Okay, so far as... Uh, women uh, covering the faces. So they can use something, they can use something uh, like a cap, etc. So the cloth doesn't touch the face. Can they buy something uh, from men? 
for example, buying food, etc. Yes. If there's need, uh, you can send uh, your husband, etc. But if there's a need, uh, then it can be brought. Just give me two seconds. <clears throat> okay, somebody asked the question about the menstrual cycle uh, during the days of Hajj. Very good question, simple answer. During the uh, five days of Hajj, you're not going to be in the masjid. So you, you're going to do everything apart from go to the masjid. So Mina, you're not in the masjid. Day of Arafat, not in the masjid. Uh, Jamarat, that's not in the masjid. The only thing that you would need to come to the masjid for is Tawaf Ziyarat. Don't worry about that. Do, you, do everything apart from Tawaf Ziyarat. When you're clean, the menstrual cycle finishes. Take a bath. Don't use soap, shampoo, unless it's unscented. Take a bath and then do your uh, tawaf and say simple. Okay, Molana, shall we start on part two? And we'll We're going to start on part two now. Yes. Exactly. Like here. Can you see the uh, screen in Shidbai? Should you say 9th of Zul Hijjah? Yes, we can see that. That's okay, we're good to go. Okay, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So, somebody asked about the 7th of Zul Hijjah. Just let me just go back to that for that benefit of that person. So, you'll take a bath. Uh, in that bath, of course, in the state of Haram, you can use soap, shower gel, whatever, deodorant. Uh, wear the Haram at the hotel. Read the two rakats. First rakat, kul ya yul kafirun. Second rakat, kul wallah had. Make intention, oh Allah, I intend to perform hajj. Make it easy for me and accept it from me. Read talbiya, labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika laka. Okay? So let's go back. Okay, so we were here. Uh, so just let me recap, just uh, so it's just easier. So Hajj, on the 7th, we got ready. On the 8th, uh, we came to Mina, spent the whole day in Mina. In the morning, on the next day, on the 9th, we came to Arafat. After Zohar, we made our own du'as. Usually, usually, they used to be, after Asar, the du'a by the scholar, the sheikh, I'm not too sure what the tertib is. If there's no one there to make dua, of course, you can use this time to make your own dua. You have extra time. So like I said, be mentally prepared. Just get a, a notebook and just start writing that, you know, what duas you're going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> After that, you'll go to... Let's just, let just go back. So, Okay, I think this is where we left off. So one or two things regarding uh, Muzdalifa. So you will, uh, Rashid, bhai, you can just mute the mic. I can hear like something. So this is uh, Muzdalifa. So you'll spend the night here. One or two things. So you've read your Maghrib and Isha in the time of Isha. One. After that, you will have food. When I say you will have food, that's what used to happen. So if you don't get food straight away after that, don't say Molana told us food milega or it's like it's part of the arkan of Hajj. So normally you have food. Then after that, uh, collect pebbles. If you collect at least forty nine, what I would suggest is collect more than that, uh, just as a precaution. The other thing to note is that this is what. Uh, Muzdalifa looks like and Jazakla to Rashid Bhai for the beautiful photo uh, what I wanted to, why I've added this photo in here just wanted to mention one thing that uh, nearby or somewhere on the side we have toilets 
So if you are going to use the bathroom, if you are going to use the bathroom before you go to the bathroom, have a look around with you, ha have a look around you and have a look <coughs> and think to yourself in front of me, I have that lamppost and behind me have that uh, mountain that's this particular shape. So, and on the left side I have this or on the right side I have this. So why I'm mentioning this because when you go to the bathroom, it's okay because you can see the bathroom block from far. When you come out the bathroom, all you see is like a sea of people. So after the Hajj seminar, my son was asking the Abba, how would you find your way? So I was just joking with my son, I'd get one of those balloons. I would get one of those balloons and tie it to a string so I know where I'm going back. So I was just joking with my son, but try to have a look around you before you go to the bathroom, before you go to Wuzu. Uh, that's one tip. Another tip is that if you can try to use the bathroom before uh, you go to sleep, uh, if there's not that big rush, because of course, next day, everybody will wake up for Fajr and uh, there'll be long queues for the bathroom, the toilet. <coughs> of course, if next day you need to use the toilet, you need, you, you need to use the bathroom. There's no ifs and buts about it. But these one or two tips. So you'll collect the pebbles and try to get some rest as well, because the next day uh, is going to be quite busy. So. Ninth was the day that's just coming to an end. That was the most important day. And the next day is going to be the most busiest day. So you spend the night here. Okay, next morning we're on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. <clears throat> the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. Now we'll read Fajr in the beginning time. So normally according to Ahnaf, uh, when the time of Fajr starts, more towards the end, we did the Fajr Namaz. But on the day, on the, on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, you will read Fajr in the beginning time. Uh, you will engage in Zikr, Dua, just before sunrise, just about four or five minutes before sunrise. Then you will leave for Mina. So you will leave uh, just before sunrise. So I might pass me. I myself personally have found it easier to walk. It's not, uh, it's about 40 minute walk. It's, that, it's not that far. Of course, when you get there, they will tell you what options are available. So you come back to me now. What we used to do is we used to come, have breakfast, have a rest till Zohar. Uh, I keep saying this, that of course, when you go there, they will, you will be told that, you know, this time we're going to be doing this, this, this. So don't let that worry you too much. Just focus on learning the Messiah and learning how to do Hajj. So on this day, you're going to do a couple of things. So one is to pelt the shaitan. You're going to have your animal sacrifice and you're going to have your head, sorry, yeah, head shaved and your hair trimmed. Now, something very, very important. The, the pelting of the shaitan, the having, uh, the sacrificing of the animal done too, and your head being shaved or trimmed, these three things need to be done in order and it's wajib. Now, apart from that, you're going to do the tawaf and Sa'i of Hajj. That can be done before all these three, after all these three, in the middle of these three. So just to give you an example, what we used to do after Zor, we used to leave for Jamarat. When we arrived at Jamarat, when everybody's pelted the shaitan, then somebody would make a phone call to the group leader and say that the group has completed the Rami of Jamarat. Now on the on the first day, you'll only pelt the third one, the large one. You don't need to worry about that because the local authorities, the police, the, the army, they will not let you pelt the first and second one anyway. So that's nothing to worry about. So we used to go pelt the shaitan. Somebody would make a phone call to the group leader in the slaughterhouse. They would start to arrange the sacrificing of the animal. For those that are doing tamatto and those that are doing 
Quran, this is wajib. When I say this is wajib, the sacrificing of the animal is known as dami shukr. So in, in the Bradford uh, uh, seminar as well, somebody came up to me and said that my grandfather or my father-in-law told me how to do dam. So dam, dam uh, is, means blood. So it, the word dam is also used for penalty, large penalty. And it's also used for dami shukr as well. So this is in gratitude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that one journey gave you the tawfiq to do umrah and hajj. <coughs> okay. So then we used to walk towards Mecca, come there. Now, like I said, that tawaf can be done now. You don't have to wait till you've had your head shaved off. Back in the times when I went, uh, the group, what they used to have was a list in the foyer and whosoever's qurbani was done, they would tick it off so anybody in the hotel could come and check the name, whether the qurbani has been done or not. And they used to give you a call from the reception in the room that, you know, you said, uh, Salaam Alaikum, how are you? Uh, your qurbani is done, etc. So we knew our qurbani is done. So what we used to do is come to Makkah and rather than wait uh, for, to, for the announcement or for the, the to be notified that our qurbani is done, we used to start tawaf. So this is the tawaf is of hajj. It's known as tawaf is yarat. So you do tawaf the normal way. And you'll uh, do sa'i in the normal way. So how you did uh, tawaf and sa'i for umrah, exactly the same way, no difference. Okay, one thing. If you went to the hotel, and waited and waited until uh, you found out the qurbani is done. So now you can get your head shaved. If you've had your he head shaved, now you can wear your normal clothes. At this point, if you're going for tawaf and sa'i, the tawaf, there will, be, there will still be the ramal, but there will be no istiba. Istiba means uncovering the right shoulder. If you're wearing your juba or your salwar kameez, then of course, there's going to be no uh, istiba. That's one thing. <coughs> Second thing, that once you've had your head shaved, now once again, everything or almost everything becomes halal again, apart from your wife. So you can wear uh, itar, you can cut your hair, you can cut your nails, uh, all these things, but you can't engage in intercourse, you can't engage in sexual relations with your wife, this is very, very important. Once you've done, so everything becomes halal apart from intimate relations with your wife, sexual intercourse. This will become halal once you've done the tawaf and say of hajj. Okay, <clears throat> so that's one or two things. Like I mentioned before as well, uh, if your hair is less than one inch, then you'll get it shaved. And it's best to get it shaved because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made dua three times for those that shave the head, muhalliqeen, and once for the muqassireen, those that trim the hair. <coughs> Coming to the jamarat. So this is what it will look like, what's in the center. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, on the first day, you'll only pelt the large shaitan you will take one pebble how how big a uh, common question is how big the pebbles should be the size of chickpea is the answer <coughs> so you don't need to take massive boulders and rocks <coughs> you'll take one pebble and throw it bismillah allah akbar raghman li shaitan wa ridhalli rahman Allah majalu hajjam mabroora wa dhammam maghfoora wa sa'yam mashkoora. If you can't remember all that, just read Bismillah, Allah Akbar. Take the pebble between the thumb and the finger. Throw it. Very, very important that can you see this structure in the middle? If the pebble hits the structure, hits this massive wall, and it bounces back, it bounces back and it doesn't go in the pit. In the next slide, I'll show you what I mean by the pit. So if it doesn't go in the pit, then that's, that's not valid. 
it doesn't have to hit the, this wall that you can see in the middle, so long as it goes in the pit. So long as it goes in the pit. So you'll take one by one. <clears throat> if somebody had in his hand, somebody threw them all in one, that's, that's uh, classed as one. <coughs> so one by one, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, throw it. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, throw it. If, because there's lots of people, you're not too sure whether your pebble went inside the pit or not, throw another one. There's no harm in throwing an extra one if you're not sure. So this is what I mean by the pit. Wait, can you see this on the right-hand side, this wall where this gentleman, I'm guessing he's a gentleman, is resting his hands. Uh, that and between the wall, there's like a gap. So the, what I'm trying to say is that the pebble needs to go in the gap. So it doesn't need to hit the wall. If you threw it so hard that it rebounded, is not classed as pelting the shaitan. <coughs> so just to recap for that day, on the 10th, you came back from Mina. On the 10th, you read Fajr beginning time. The Uf of Muzdalifa starts from now till just before sunrise, you will make dua, you will engage yourself in dua, recitation of the Quran, Zikr, Ibadat, Tilawat. Just before sunrise, you will leave. Of course, this is how it's supposed to be done. If you're leaving, quite has nothing to be worried about. Like I said many times, this is in the hands of the management and the people that are organizing. Don't let that worry you. You'll come to me now. Most likely rest after Zor, after Asar, when they bring you, uh, you come towards Jamarat, do the pelting of the Lord Shaitan. After that, you go towards Mecca. That's why I said in the previous days, trust because it's going to be quite a busy day, physically demanding. Uh, one or two things before I forget. Uh, when you're coming to Mecca, I would personally use uh, an umbrella, suggest using an umbrella. This is also where your water bottle is going to come in handy. A water bottle that keeps your water cool is ideal. If not, just like half liter bottle, keep it with you. And on the way to Makkah on the side, uh, there's places where you can fill uh, your water bottle. Keep your water bottle full, drink, keep Keep drinking, keep drinking, and look after your health. <coughs> okay, so you come to Mecca, you do the tawaf, you do the sa'i, uh, you find out that your animal has been sacrificed, uh, you have your head shaved, and after that you wear your normal clothes, and you, you wear your, your normal clothes, and then, like I mentioned, that everything becomes halal, apart from uh, the relationship the, with the wife. So that's the 10th. Okay. So on the 11th and the 12th. So, so after you've done your uh, tawaf, then you'll go back. Even if it's late at night, you'll try to get back to Mina. Uh, you spend the night in Mina. The next day is simple uh, and it's quite easy that after. Uh, in the afternoon after Zawal, you'll go pelt all three shaitan, starting from the small one, medium one, large one, seven, 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 and then come back to Mina. On the next day, which is the fifth, exactly the same, your hajj is now complete. Before you leave, before you leave, you will perform one tawaf. This is known as tawaf. A Without, if you've made any mistakes, the known and jinayat, uh, Mufti Farooq's book, A Woman's Guide to Hajj and Umrah is very, very good. And it explains the jinayat very clearly and it's very easy to understand in the way that they've written that. So have a look at that as well. Perform your tawaf. Once you've done the tawaf of Hajj, then any time after that, you can do tawaf as a tip, what I would suggest. <clears throat> At the earliest opportunity, especially if you think that your cycle is going to start, and even for the men as well, do one tawaf as soon as possible. 
and make intention when you're performing that tawaf, that this tawaf is for tawaf with if I don't get the opportunity to do tawaf again. So for example, if person falls sick or the lady's uh, cycle starts, it's not going to be an issue. <clears throat> if the cycle doesn't start, the cycle doesn't start, or you can go again, then it's not, there's not issue because sometimes people have come and they ask, uh, somebody said that once you've done one tawaf with that, you can't do another one. So if you've done one, just in case, you don't get the opportunity, but if you do get the opportunity, then try to do one before you leave as well. Pay your jinayat. Now, <clears throat> some of you, depending on what time you arrive, etc., etc., uh, you might need to, might be told to do Hajj Kiran, Allah alam, what the situation is going to be there, but it's good to know. So I'll just go through uh, some of the things that are slightly different in Hajj Kiran. <clears throat> Kiran means to join. So what happens is that Hajj Tamatto is what usually people do. They do Umrah, come out of a Haram, stay in Mecca on the seventh at night, come back into a Haram and come for Hajj. <clears throat> How this works, you'll make intention for Hajj and Umrah. You'll come do Tawaf and Sa'i normally. There's no difference in Tawaf and Sa'i. <clears throat> Once you completed the Sa'i, no, for those that are doing Tamatto, you will shave the head. In Hajj Kiran, you will not shave the head and you will not come out of a haram. Okay, so you do the Tawaf, so you come into the state of a haram, do the Tawaf, do the Sa'i, but you don't shave your head and you don't come out of a haram. Okay. Then you will do tawaf al qudum that's another tawaf, and you will do sa'i. After that, you'll go for the days of hajj, do everything the same. And then on the 10th, you will do tawaf al ziyarat. You will do tawaf al ziyarat. Now, if you're wearing your normal clothes, of course, there's no ramal and istiba. And you will give uh, Dami Shukar, as I've explained before. Okay. So that's just slightly different. So just to recap on this. So when you make intention, at uh, a person who's doing tamatto, he will make intention, oh Allah, intend to perform Umrah, do Umrah, come out of Umrah, stay in Mecca, then on the seventh, tie the haram, oh Allah, intend to perform Hajj, complete Hajj. Etc. A person doing Hajj Qiran is known as Qarin. The reason why I'm mentioning this because you might come across this in the books. And so I'm just going through some of the terminology as well. So a Qarin, he will come, he will make intention for, or before he crosses Mikat, he will make intention for Hajj and Umrah. Allahumma inni uridu al-Hajj wal umrata fayassir huma li wa taqabbal huma minni. So this is Arabic. If you don't know the Arabic, you can uh, make niyat in any language. Come to Mecca, do the tawaf, do the sa'i, then you don't come out of a haram, you don't shave your head, do another tawaf, which is called tawaf al-qudum. So just to keep it simple, I would have just said do tawaf, but you might come across the terminology uh, tawaf al-qudum. You'll do the sa'i and then carry on doing You'll go for Hajj. So you, you won't need to tie the haram because you already uh, do your Hajj like everyone else. On the 10th, you'll do Tawaf, which is known as Tawaf is Yarat. Uh, if you're in like the, what do you call it? Uh, a haram, then there will be Ramal and Istiba. If you're wearing normal clothes, then only then no Ramal and Istiba, which I need to make clear in this slide. Okay, then give the, you'll need to give them a shukar. This is wajib. Dami shukri is the sacrificing of the animal. Okay, we're going to go now, now Medina al Munawwara. So some of you could be traveling from uh, the UK direct to Medina al Munawwara, and some of you, most of you after Hajj. If you are going to Medina first, so where will you tie your ihram? So uh, 
when you cross Bari Ali is a boundary. Uh, before you cross that, you can pay your haram in your hotel. That's one option and make need there. Or you can, uh, there's a masjid there. Just before you cross the boundary, there's a masjid there. They have adequate facilities. You can uh, take a bath there, wear your haram from there and read two, two rakats there. <clears throat> so it's permissible from uh, both places. Prior to arriving in uh, Medina al Munawwara, what I would say is that read about the of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you're going uh, next year, read something like Siratul Mustafa. Uh, it'll give you an idea of the greatness of the personality that we're going to visit. And it will give you a greater understanding of the life from beginning to end of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his sacrifices for the ummah, his love for his ummah, so, and many, many other things, many other things. So it's advisable and highly recommended that you read a seerat. Uh, you can also listen to YouTube, uh, on YouTube. I'm reluctant to say that because you don't know who you could be listening to, but best is to read a book Arrival in Medina Munawwara, so same same uh, as before. Give everyone uh, the hotel card, regardless of whether they're old, whether they're young. Leave your luggage in the hotel room. Uh, by that, I mean that don't just, uh, because what happens is that when you uh, arrive in Medina, uh, your luggage gets taken off the coach and put in the hotel reception. Sometimes the staff, they take the luggage to the rooms and they leave it outside. But don't uh, just wait for that to happen. Make sure your luggage has gone to your room, inside your room. Then prepare. Take a bath. Wear your best clothes. Don't wear anything un-Islamic. Wear good quality perfume, ether, and then come to the masjid. So when you're leaving the hotel for Masjid al in Medina, try to read as much Duru Sharif as possible. When you're in Mecca, try to for, perform as much Tawaf as possible. In Tawaf, you can only perform in Mecca al mukarramah So try to read as much, as much, try to do as much Tawaf as, as possible because once you leave Mecca, you will not get this opportunity to this, do this anywhere in the world. And if you're tired, then sit and have a look at Masjid Haram and look at the Kaaba. It is mentioned in Hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the nearest meaning that every day, 120 blessings descend. 60 of those on the people doing Tawaf. 40 of those on the people praying Salat and 20 for those people that are looking at the Kaaba. Very virtuous. There's also a hadith, it's irrelevant, but I still mention it. Uh, for looking at Masjid al Aqsa, there's also a virtue for that. The Prophet وسلم, mentioned, and Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Hakim al Naysa Buri in his Mustadrak al Sahihain has mentioned that when the virtue of looking at uh, Masjid al-Aqsa said that a time will come when a person will have land the size of the rein of his horse and from there he will look at Masjid al-Aqsa and that for him will be better than what the world and what it contains. So if you're tired, have, have, just sit down, chill, relax, have a look at Kaaba. These are blessings that fortunate people get. And you, like I said before as well, that try to perform your Hajj like you might never get the opportunity again. Entering Masjid al okay. Uh, before I go into this, if I was to summarize the Medina part of your visit in one word, 
then it's all about respect. When you enter Medina, it's very, very peaceful, very beautiful, very calm. I mean, it's just like, in words, I can't describe, but when you go there, you'll understand. So have respect for everything. And what I would suggest as well, Hadrat Shaykh al Hadith, Mawlana Zikriya Sahib, Navar Allahu Marqadahu wa Barrad Allahu Madjahu, is written in Fazaili Hajj. Uh, try to once again read the pages uh, or read the section that uh, speaks about Medina al Munawwara and read the amazing stories of the pious predecessors that he has mentioned. Just to give you a feel of what, of what to expect and what's happened there historically. <coughs> and enter there very calmly, take a bath, take a bath. Uh, wear your best clothes, wear good itar, and come to the masjid. Enter with the right foot, lift your shoes with the left foot, take, of course, your shoe bag as well. Make intention for etikaf when you're entering uh, Masjid Haram, Masjid Rabwi, Masjid Aqsa, or any masjid. Make a niyat of etikaf. You can make niyat of etikaf in any language. The dua for entering the masjid, Bismillahi was salatu was salamu ala Rasulillah, Allah maftahli abwa rahmatik. The area between the sacred chamber and the pulpit, the member, is known as Riyazul Jannah, the Garden of Paradise. So you recognize that it has a cream colored carpet. Cream ca ca carpet. The, red, the other color is red, which is what the masjid is covered in. Uh, okay. So, when you enter the masjid, read two rakat, tahiyyatul masjid, and also you can read two rakat, shukrana, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave you the tawfiq to come here. This is, a, when you come to present your salam, this is the beautiful scene that you will be presented with. Uh, of course, there'll be lots of people there, and there'll be uh, crowd rush. Now you can see that uh, three circles. The first one are, in fact, you can see four circles. But look, can you see the two pillars, the cream colored pillars? Uh, between those, there's on the left hand side, there's a large circle, and then two smaller ones. So when you're in line, with the one that's in also almost the middle of the slide, you will present your salam. Bismillah. He was, um, you will present your salam. As salatu was salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. There are longer versions of uh, salat and salam in many different kitabs. Uh, learn something that you can read off by heart. And you can stand there with respect, with politeness. You are standing in front. When you're in front of that circle, you're in line with the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So stand with utmost adab, understand, uh, understand with utmost respect and don't uh, try to look in, in the, uh, the, the grills or the brass gate, etc. Don't try to peep, etc. Stand with respect. Then when you move on your, to your, the first circle will come in line with the face of Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and convey salam on him. Assalamu alayka ya Amir al Mu'mineen. Assalamu alayka ya Abu Bakr. Then you move slightly to the right, and the third and the last circle <coughs> is you'll be in line with the face of Hadrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, and you'll convey your salam. Assalamu alayka ya Umar ibn al Khattab. Assalamu alayka ya Amir al Mu'mineen. And then you'll, you, you, might not get, uh, because of so many people, you might not get the chance and the opportunity to spend a long time. You'll move forward when you're uh, in this section. Uh, make sure that you don't put your back towards the Rosa Mubarak, Rosa Sharif. Uh, you'll walk forward if you get the opportunity just as you enter, as you exit the masjid, uh, face the Qibla and make dua. If you, but because there's lots of people, you might not get this opportunity to make dua. It's not an issue, you'll just come out. A beautiful photo of uh, Medina al-Munawwara. 
during your stay, uh, if you're shopping, uh, what I would recommend is try to do your shopping in uh, Medina Al Murawwara. When you're shopping, shop with the intention of benefiting the people of Medina Al Murawwara. Spend on them, be kind to them, be generous to them. Uh, there are people that uh, clean the streets as well. Uh, you can give them uh, some some money, give them a gift. Just my suggestion: be nice to them. Just say have tea on me, or you know, just a, a little gift from me. Don't belittle uh, anyone, and have respect for the city, its inhabitants. We go there a few days, come back. For those people residing there, or those that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose to be the neighbors uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So try to spend as much time as possible in the masjid. Try to read as much Drushif as possible. Uh, I can't remember in my checklist whether I put uh, Tasbih or not, but if I haven't, then get a good Tasbih, especially if you're going to Medina, buy a Tasbih, buy a Musalla with the intention of benefiting the people and keep that Tasbih in your pocket. So <coughs> it will allow you to do uh, a lot of Zikr. Now, one tip that I would suggest, so keep a Tasbih in your pocket. When you're coming to the hotel on the way, read as much Jerushif as possible. Preferably the Jerushif that we read in Namaz. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barik ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. The shortest Jerushif. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you can read many thousand times the Durushif. Keep the Tasbih in your pocket. As a tip, uh, what, I, what I would suggest is, uh, especially in Makkah Al-Mukarrama, try to come early. A couple of advantages of that. Uh, you'll avoid the, the crowds. So what I normally try to do is come early. Uh, if you can read uh, one Sipara in 15, 20 minutes. If you come early, you can read one separa before namaz and one separa after namaz. So after namaz, try not to rush out unless you have to go for some reason. Uh, but if you read one separa before namaz, one separa after namaz, five, ten separa in one day, three, three days, you've completed the whole Quran. Try to finish one Quran in, in Mecca, one in Medina. If not, then at least one Quran in the whole, whole journey. Like I said, that try to... Uh, spend as much time in both of the masajid. The main thing is uh, Tawaf in Mecca and Duru Sharif in Medina al Munawwara. So, like I said, don't say anything bad about the people of Medina al Munawwara. So this is where the slide, uh, the presentation comes to an end. I'm going to hand it back to our Rashid Bayan to say the concluding words and we'll conclude inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum and thank you Malana for taking us through the journey of Hajj. Uh, just before we conclude, can we go through the Q and A's? Uh, we've got quite a few uh, lined up. So uh, if you can go through that and if you have any other questions that you want answering or if you've got any queries or comments, please feel free to use a Q and A function. And we'll try and get these answered um, by Molana while she's here. And if I can answer them, I'll do that as well. Okay. So somebody's asked, I'm just quickly going through the questions, uh, try to answer these to the best of my ability. Um, you have covered what pilgrims need to do if they are going to Mecca first. What about pilgrims that will be going to Medina first? So, uh, Hopefully I've covered that. So if you're going to Medina first, you will not need to wear a haram. That's one thing. You stay in Medina. When you leave Medina, uh, you can tie your haram from your hotel or at the miqat. <clears throat> okay. Uh, if this sacrifice is a dam, then do we need to do a second qurbani too? So a very good question. So if you're Musafir, then no, if you're not Musafir and you're Makim, you're staying in Mecca for more than uh, 15 days and you have a certain amount of wealth, like 
and if qurbani was wajib on you because of your wealth then that qurbani is separate to the sacrificing of the animal that's why i try to avoid using the word qurbani to so there's no confusion somebody's asked to clarify when we go to makkah do we do tawaf first so i'm not too sure exactly what they want to ask but one thing uh, that when you get to makkah uh, i'm not too sure what they want to ask can you go to the hotel and rest so first you'll go to the hotel if you need to rest if you need to eat you can eat is when you go to Makkah, it's mustahab to start your tawaf. But if you're tired, have food. Uh, if, if you're tired, sorry, have um, a rest. Have a rest. Uh, if you're hungry, have food. You want tea, have tea. Okay, somebody asked, uh, just to be clear, first Umrah when we arrived in Saudi, Makkah, when we leave for Medina, uh, when we return to Mecca before Hajj. Every time you perform Umrah, every single time you perform Umrah, uh, then you need to shave your head. So I to say that if you're doing uh, Kiran, if you're doing Kiran, then of course, once you've done your Umrah, you will not, you will not shave your head. Okay, you will complete your Hajj, then you will shave your head but if you're just doing umrah one after another so for, for example on uh, you had plenty of time so monday you've done one umrah and then thursday you want to go for another umrah for, then you will uh, shave your head jinayat is simple is mistakes so if you uh, applied soap or you use fragrance etc etc et so that's what jinayat means in um, uh, mufti faruk's kitabs Sabs is explained quite good on the 12th day. 12th and two seconds, somebody has to go back on the 12th day. Okay, just give me a few moments. 11th and 12th is basically the same. Uh, you'll go to the Jamarat, pelt the Jamarat, come back, all three of them. So for uh, Mina, uh, et cetera, Medina, what I was just at least, uh, somebody asked about uh, virtuous act, the recitation of the Quran, Drushif. So in Medina, I try to read as much Drushif as possible. Try to at least, so far as Zikr is concerned, uh, at least 100 times in the morning, 100 times in the evening, uh, at least Drushif on normal when you're not in Medina. Uh, recitation of the Quran, if you're not Hafiz, at least one spara every day, regardless of whether we in Hajj or not. And if we in Hajj, try to read as much as possible. <coughs> okay, so somebody asked, where do we pray uh, the two records uh, when we wear a haram? If you, you can read that at home, you can read that at the airport, you can read that on the plane. So what I would suggest is where you haram, etc., at home, at the airport or on the plane, read the two records, then make intention once the plane takes off. I wouldn't, uh, you can make intention, but what, the reason why I'm reluctant to say make intention at home or on the way is because, uh, because of staff shortages, etc., plane delays, or things like that. Once the plane takes off, make intention. I wouldn't suggest holding on to, to your wife's hand. If there is a crowd and you need to, and you're concerned that you're going to lose her, then you, if need be, if there's if she's going far, then Anything that we can do while we're in the UK, prepare prepare for Hajj, you can write a will, yes.
once you've done tawaf is yarat, then you can do uh, tawaf wida. Okay, tawaf is ziyarat, starting on the 10th, 11th, and 12th before the time of Asr ends. Somebody asked about uh, playing, uh, uh, praying on a plane, sorry. So if you're going on Saudi, it's not much to worry about because uh, it, they will show you the direction of the Qibla and they have space for that as well. Okay, should by this we're done with the questions. Okay, brilliant. Has anybody else got any questions before we end the session? I think we've covered pretty much everything. We're going to try and do a special a special session on uh, Medina uh, later on in the week. Um, and uh, as soon as that's uh, confirmed, I'll get uh, uh, the team to email you the links. And uh, if you can support us, please do so uh, with your duas. And inshallah, we're trying to get a team uh, ready, uh, subject to approvals, to be on the ground with you during the days of Hajj as well, so that we can please guide you. And if we can't be there in person, most certainly we'll have a WhatsApp number or a, a point of contact that you can at least uh, get your uh, questions ans answered as well. Uh, feedback and suggestion will be uh, great. And Molana, if you could hand me over the host control, I'll just finally, for those who missed the poll that we ran a little bit earlier, I'll give a few minutes before we end the session to just complete that. It'll help us assess, and evaluate and share with those that uh, uh, the feedback that we get from, uh, from the, uh, the poll, inshallah. So I'm just going to relaunch the poll. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. Inshallah, we'll get a WhatsApp number out to you um, ahead of uh, you traveling out. Just out of interest, um, what kind of flights are we looking at? When are, when are the first flights or when are people traveling out? Um, if you want to just raise your hand and maybe ask a question or uh, make a comment or even put something in the chat. I believe the first flights out to the UK uh, this coming Friday. So we wish you all a pleasant journey, inshallah, a safe journey. Fourth of July, okay, so you'll be going straight to Mecca, I assume. 25th of June, um, I assume then you'll be going to Medina first. What I would be tempted to do is actually look at uh, what the, is, the Hijri calendar looks like as well, uh, because that will determine when you'll be traveling uh, into Hajj or into Mecca and vice versa. Um, because if you are traveling from Medina, as we understand some people will be, they'll be traveling on the 7th of Zil Hijjah, uh, which is very close uh, proximity to Hajj, and you'll literally enter Hajj. So you may need to look at the type of Hajj you'll be performing. As Molana mentioned, you have the Hajj Tamatu, which gives you the uh, flexibility to come out of Ihram once you perform Umrah and then go back into Umrah uh, for Hajj. You may need to go in uh, straight into Hajj with the Ihram uh, as you enter Mecca if, if your time is very short and uh, close to Hajj dates. We've fed yeah. back a lot of the issues that people have been having with the uh, Mutawif portal. They're aware of it. They've extended the payment terms from like 48 hours to 72. Um, all that we can say, we don't have any say in the matter. Um, but just keep uh, emailing the customer care. They've given us the assurance that everyone's uh, application will be dealt with. Uh, I know it's frustrating. I know it's a very difficult time, but stay firm uh, with the, uh, knowing that the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited you, and this is your test, your journey to Allah, journey to his house, journey to Hajj has begun. And, uh, and this is a test for people going for Hajj in 2020. <clears throat> May Allah make it easy for you all. Uh, just somebody asked that uh, once uh, we've had a head shaved, we're not going to have any hair. So what about if we do 
uh, Umrah again is not an issue. So if you did Umrah on Monday and you went to do Umrah on Thursday, you're not going to have much hair, but just still you need to go to the barbers and ask him to go over your head with the razor. Same if you're bald, even if you don't have a single head, I mean, if you don't have a single hair, sorry, uh, you will go uh, to the barber and ask him to go over as if you had hair. Exactly. Okay. So I'd love to um, continue, but I think we've come to the end of the session. I hope it's been worthwhile. Please do share the links that we'll be sharing with you, with your friends and family and others who will go in. Uh, if you're still in the pending state with the application, we'll make dua, inshallah, that that gets approved very soon. And then one of one of the million that are called from Hajj, inshallah. I'll just ask Molana just to conclude with a small dua, uh, and then we'll close the session, inshallah. So, uh, once again, Jazakallah uh, from myself to all of you for joining this uh, live seminar. Up from the depth of my heart. That Allah take you safely, bring you back safely, accept your Hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything easy for you. Remember, in your du'as, if you have any feedback uh, and you want to share, please let us know. Uh, this is something that we've done in the past, uh, webinars, Hajj seminars, etc. And your feedback is very, very, very important. If I get feedback, then I read every single letter to the full stop and comma. comma. And usually when I do um, Hajj seminars, it's uh, not webinars, it's and I ask for feedback at the end and that uh, feedback I keep. So if there's anything that you would like to see, like somebody mentioned about the translation of the duas in Urdu, English, etc., your feedback is very, very important. So because of this, a lot of changes are made and a lot of changes that we make, or inshallah, we will make is on the back of the feedback that you provide us. So if there's anything that you would like to see in the future, please let us know if we can accommodate then inshallah we will try our best. So once again, I wish you all the best. Uh, you have been chosen uh, to be the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make everything easy for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you. Remember us all in your duas. Inshallah, inshallah, we will remember you all in our duas. May Allah take you safely, bring you back safely. May Allah accept your hajj. May Allah accept the, your ziyarat. Uh, may Allah accept your hajj. May Allah accept your umrahs. Uh, that reminds me one thing I forgot to mention that if you're doing Hajj uh, or Umrah on behalf of someone uh, then you will just say that oh Allah intend to perform Hajj on behalf of my father I, I, I intend to perform Hajj on behalf of my brother etc etc so that's we're doing Hajj Badal uh, so inshallah we'll uh, conclude with a short dua inshallah so if I can ask the audience to read Rushuf and inshallah we'll conclude Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidun Majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidun Majid Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirat hasana wa qina adab al-nar Allahumma gfir lana wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawab al-rahim Allahumma la nusisana alayka anta kama athanayta ala nafsik اللهم فرج هم المحمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين وأدي الدين على المدينين اللهم لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا اللهم ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملت ولا الذين من قبلنا اللهم ربنا ولا تحمل لما قتلنا به وعفو لنا وغفر لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين فانصرنا للقوم الظالمين فانصرنا للقوم المفسدين oh Allah all those people that you have chosen to attend your house this year, Allah accept the Hajj, Allah accept the Umrahs, Allah accept the Ziyarat of Medina al Munawwara. Allah make it easy for them. Allah accept the Hajj, Allah make the journey easy for them, make it safe for them to travel and bring them back safely. Allah, all the money, all the wealth they have spent, Allah reward them in this world and in the hereafter. Allah, there are many changes, there are many uncertainties, but one thing is certain Allah, these are your guests and you will look after them. Allah, Accept the duas, Allah accept the efforts, Allah accept the efforts, Allah accept the efforts and make everything easy for them. Allah accept these efforts in trying to help the hujjaj. Allah, we will remember them in, in our duas. Allah, 
Allah make everything easy. Allah make everything easy. Allah make everything easy. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa zawajihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmiddin. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Amin. Amin.